Hello, I'm Ted Pike, and this is my wife, Alyn. Over the past 40 years, the Anti-Defamation League persuaded dozens of governments, from Canada to Australia, to pass their anti-hate laws. At their website, ADL.org, ADL proudly explains how it convinced 45 U.S. states to adopt its model anti-hate legislation. ADL has been so successful largely because it assured legislators that all citizens will be equally protected by hate laws. ADL's federal hate bill, now passed by the U.S. House of Representatives and pending in the Senate, assures such equality. It says all Americans will be equally protected according to race, color, religion, and so on. But does the hate bill really give equal rights and protection to all? In testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee, Attorney General Eric Holder said the hate bill will not give equality to most Americans. What about a uh, minister who goes to the uh, town hall meeting and quotes the Koran and the, uh, the scripture and, and says uh, uh, homosexual activities are uh, immoral, and uh, he's attacked by a gay activist. Well, the statute would not, would not necessarily cover that. Um, on the other hand, I think that... So is there, is there a reason for someone to think that um, this is um, odd? Does that strike you as odd, that one might be a, the crime and another one not? We're talking about crimes that have a historic basis. Groups who have been targeted for violence as a result of the color of their skin, their sexual orientation, that is what this statute tends, is, is designed to cover. Well, I think that's part of the problem. The elderly are not protected groups, security guards are not protected groups, okay. soldiers are apparently not protected groups. Some are protected groups and get special protection under this law. Well, but one has to look at the history of, the unfortunate history in, of our nation. Um, there are groups who have been singled out who have been the objects of violence simply because of their sexual orientation, the color of their skin, their ethnicity. Um, we have to face and confront that reality. That which historically has been a problem for that nation continues to be a problem for this nation. And the absence... I asked you during last week's hearing whether you viewed the June 1st murder of Army Private William Andrew Long that was targeted by a Muslim because he was a U.S. soldier as a hate crime. Well, there's a certain element of hate, I suppose, in, um, in that. But I think what we're looking for here in terms of the expansion of the statute uh, are instances where there is a historic basis to see groups of people who are singled out um, for violence perpetrated against them because of who they are. So what we're willing to do is elevate those crimes over the very intended hate crime that this man per perpetrated upon the soldier. And we're saying they have an elevated status. No, it's not a question of elevating the crime. It is dealing with the reality that we confront. 80,000 crimes directed against people who this bill um, would cover. But with regard to the soldier that Senator Coburn asked you about, he's not covered, Mr. Attorney General, by the Act. He's not one of these uh, groups, unless he was a homosexual advocating that, and that caused the attack. Uh, so he wouldn't be covered. There are lots of other groups, people, decent people, that uh, might need additional federal protection if the federal government had all the money in the world and all the time to investigate this. Clearly the federal hate bill is not intended to protect most Americans from hate crimes. It only protects those whom ADL says are the victims of Christian, white, male civilization. In persuading legislators to pass their hate laws, ADL frightens them, saying, there is an epidemic of hate in America. Hate, they say, is terrorizing whole communities. ADL says states are often unwilling or unable to prosecute hate-motivated violence. To counter this alleged failure of our justice system, ADL argues that the federal government should be empowered to take over local hate crimes law enforcement. Are the states really failing to enforce the law against hate criminals? This was a central question Republican senators asked Holder 
during the recent hearing. Holder always answered evasively. Now, do you have any evidence that this is the case, that there is a trend that specifically with regard to bias-motivated crimes, justice is not being served in this country? I'm not sure that I would say that I see a trend. I think that um, state and local prosecutors, our partners, do a, a good job. But I also know, as I noted in my um, prepared remarks, that there are instances where there is the need for the federal government to come in where a state or a local um, locality, for whatever reason, has decided uh, not to pursue a case where I think it is clearly uh, appropriate or does not have the ability to do that. Do you know of any instances where that's the case? Well, I have uh, some in my, uh, my prepared remarks. Um, okay. I, I think about the case, I think it was in California, um, involving um, threats that were made before an assault actually occurred, and uh, that matter wa wa was not pursued. I believe. Other senators kept asking the same question because no one could get a straight answer. Do we actually have good statistics that tell us that we're not fulfilling and carrying out the intent of state laws? I think that we have certainly good statistics that tell us that hate crimes are an ongoing problem for this nation, but 80,000 or so in the past decade. The ability of the federal government to help state and local jurisdictions who want to prosecute these kinds of crimes um, is certainly impacted by the um, federal activities requirement that the bill Actually, would do my away my question is a little different than that. Do we, do we have statistics where the states are failing? Do we have statistics that say we have these 80,000 crimes and 5,000 of them the states did a poor job on? Which states are regularly or systematically failing to enforce their laws punishing crimes of violence? Well, as I said, as I pointed out in my written testimony, there are instances that I think we can point to where a state or a, a local jurisdiction has failed to act in a way that um, I think we would all at, think that a state or locality should. But I don't think, as Senator Hatch asked, I don't think that I can say that there is a trend, that there is a, a trend among um, the states or local jurisdictions in failing to go after these kinds of crimes. Okay, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try it a different direction. We don't have the statistics. We don't know what the relative level of lack of the ability of the states going. We're assuming that they need our help. We, what, I think we have 45 states that have hate crime legislation. Um, are, are the states that don't have hate crime legislation worse in terms of the prosecution of these same similar events than the states that have them? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look at the statistics, look at the, the evidence that, that we have. But what I do know is that as the law now exists, there are people who are the objects of hate um, violence who the federal government does not have an ability to protect if a state decides not to prosecute the case. Again, and we can point to specific specific cases, yeah, but I don't have an ability to give you... But I can point to specific cases on lots of things that states don't do that we would like for them to do different, that we don't come and make a special law, that we can step across that boundary between states and federal government to enforce them to do that. The uh, difference, I think, though, is that there is the historic nature of the kinds of conduct that we're talking about. People who are singled out because of their race, their religion, under the new uh, provision, their sexual orientation, where there is a history... Uh, I'll ask you again, cite me some cases of significance that have not been properly prosecuted in the last uh, five years. Well, as I said, I think there, there are statutes, or there are cases that are noted in my, in my written testimony, but here's the way that I would be. Well, no, no, no. I think this is important. You cited a California case. I understand that defendant was convicted of a, uh, an assault, uh, if not as but every day crimes are, are prosecuted in state court that may not result in a conviction to which the prosecutor or I would like, but we don't pick that up in federal court with double jeopardy principles and just prosecute them again in federal court. We must conclude that there is no real need for a vast federal hate crimes bureaucracy, one that gives special rights to some while making second-class citizens out of the rest of us.